focus on cloud, location, data center, industry, trends, the dynamic market. Hey, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk. This is Hawk Talk 45. And with us, we have the one and only Andy Spengross. Andy, Senior Vice President uh, with JLL's Data Center Solution Group. Andy, thank you for joining us. Welcome to Hawk Talk 45. It's exciting to have you. Yeah, good to be here. Uh, you know, I'm sure people know this, but you uh, joined us on our 21st episode of uh, of this content series that we do at the time. I think we were in yeah, a right. down, downtown hotel in Chicago. So uh, a little bit of a different setting. I'm in our home office. You're in your home office as well. Uh, but but talk about just what, what's this experience been like for you over the last several weeks and how are you and your family doing? Yeah, you know, we're, we're doing great. It's like everybody. It's just, uh, it's been a big change. Um, you know, I have two little kids that are climbing the walls and not fully understanding everything. Um, you know, I, I, we're trying to look at it, you know, with as many silver linings as you, you can. Um, you know, quite frankly, I'm enjoying the, the kid time. I've spent most of my career commuting or traveling and, uh, you know, just being busy. Um, and I, I think, you know, I'm liking kind of the slower pace. Uh, you know, I've, it's given me an opportunity to focus on some other things that I've wanted to for some time. I've uh, got plenty of house projects that I've been given over the past couple of weeks, you know, that uh it's all good though but you know it's it's not a uh you know there's a lot of people out there that are having a hard time and and uh you know trying to be conscious of that and at the same time keep the the wheels turning and keep things positive and keep moving forward so yeah well that's uh glad to hear that obviously things are well and you and your family are are healthy uh this uh you know i think has been an interesting time obviously for for the world uh, certainly for the data center market that we're going to talk about here in a minute. This so for those that are watching, this is our content series where we're highlighting different uh, ge geographical markets. So areas in the country Great. in the U.S. that are uh, focused on you know continuing to grow data center developments and uh, and you know the, the areas that we're seeing demand grow in. And Chicago certainly is one of those. You call Chicago home, although you're working really across the U.S. and world with different projects and, and users that you and your team are help uh, that you're help representing. Uh, but I want to dive into Chicago and some of the trends that we're, we're seeing there. Uh, so before we start on talking maybe about real-time Chicago trends, uh, let's talk about just kind of the historical growth of the Chicago data center market and maybe give the listeners an idea of how this market has grown over time. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, it's pretty easy to see that you know Chicago is just a major metro uh, there's a lot of corporate headquarters here uh, a lot of companies that you know base their operations here but maybe headquartered elsewhere um, it's a great job uh, market where there's tons of high quality tech talent operational talent construction talent um, you know and, and just kind of being the hub of the Midwest from a connectivity standpoint it's really driven uh, a lot of the major growth here over the past couple of years uh, as we've really kind of pushed the advent of technology uh, you know, forward. So, you know, I've been doing this uh, with JLL eight years now and, and just seeing where, you know, we were when it started, where we were kind of the, the, you know, build it, own it, operate it, server hugger mentality to uh, where we are at today has just been a lot of fun to see, um, a lot of advancement. Um, you know, it started with 350 CERMAC being really the hub of the connectivity uh, center uh, here locally. And a lot of that was driven by the financial sector, which we can talk about later, but, you know, exchanges and trading and, and that sort of thing. Um, but beyond that, um, you know, there's a few groups that, you know, went out on a limb to, you know, create new products called wholesale co-location. Uh, you know, and Ascent was really one of the first groups who did that, uh, you know, and, and, and landed some pretty big names within the Chicago market that were based here and, and really started to get people scratching their heads. You know, do I want to be in the business of owning and operating data centers anymore if there's this new product? Uh, you know, subsequent to that, we saw Digitality Trust invest in their new Franklin Park campus, big at scale type of build. And that was kind of the second next generation of product here locally. Uh, and beyond that, it's really just kind of exploded. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of new, you know, one off builds that are kind of focused on cloud data centers uh, or cloud users and others that are more, you know, uh, you know retail co-location, wholesale co-location, a blend of the two. Um, you know, it's, it's been fun to see. And, and from a, a demand standpoint, uh, it's really kind of done this big hump where, 
you know, initially we were, a, you know, a 20 megawatt market, 15 to 20 megawatt lease up market, then it slowly ticked up to 30 and then to 40. And then there was one year where kind of all the cloud companies uh, really set up all their nodes, uh, where it was, you know, three data center hubs or, you know, big takedowns or really kind of the first phase of cloud demand. Uh, you know, and as a result of that, you know, we, we did, I think it was upwards of 57 megawatts one year, and then, you know, it was 40 something the next, and then 30, and then back down to 20 is kind of that cloud um, usage really slowed down. But, you know, since then, it's been very dynamic. Um, you know, we can keep talking about, you know, current trends, but uh, very dynamic. It's been very lumpy, uh, you know, kind of cloud centric or enterprise or edge. There's a lot of different sectors that are really kind of doing their thing right now in a very different uh, capacity than what's once done. So uh, it's from a growth standpoint, we continue to see just activity here locally. Yeah, the the comments, I mean, you made some great commentary or comments around some of the trends that I think have grown the market over the last, you know, five to eight years in our space. You know, one is the transition out of companies owning and operating their own data centers to getting more comfortable leasing data center facilities. And, and you know, I really take that back to, kind of the 08, 09 time period where, you know, capital really froze because of the recession that the company or the, the country totally. went through. And that really changed some key buying patterns and I think key philosophical ways that data center users looked at their infrastructure. And so there was a, a massive shift. And with that shift came the market that we sit in today, which, uh, as you mentioned it, I mean, if you look at the absorption in Chicago over the last, you know, five or six years. I mean, it is a big growth and it has, has come down in this, uh, uh, you know, as now more enterprise users are, are focused on that market. And I'm sure it's, you know, pot pot uh, potentially in a position to go back up. Uh, but but I think that's one of the things that you highlighted that was, was really um, a good point. The other thing that I think makes uh, an inter or shows some of the changes that have taken place is the developments that have taken up uh, uh, different facilities downtown and then things that have moved to the suburbs. And so we really saw that start taking place, you know, in like the 2009, 2010, 2011 time periods in areas like Chicago. Dallas is another good example. I mean, those markets kind of mirror each other in the way that you have certain a core downtown and then you move out to the suburbs and there's big or scalable, just very large facilities. Um, and that is something that I think uh, Chicago, obviously, it's 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 almost two different markets. You have the downtown uh, market that is, uh, you know, different than the suburb suburban market. So, talk about just the importance of, uh, and I think a lot of it revol revolves around the financial companies. But but just talk about that, like from a downtown perspective, some of those builds that have just been, uh, and you mentioned three hundred and fifty Cermak. I mean, that is you know one of the largest most robust carrier hotels in the in the United States. But just talk about that uh, downtown market and, and kind of how it ebbs and flows. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's very dynamic in terms of the differences between wholesale co-location and the suburbs versus downtown. Uh, traditionally, there has been, uh, you know, land's very expensive, buildings are very expensive. Um, you know, there's a high competition for development. Uh, the downtown office market has been, just off the charts with a lot of just uh, suburban flight towards downtown and people trying to hire tech talent. So there's been a competition, um, you know, between people, you know, available properties to, to go and acquire land. And so, um, you know, from that perspective, uh, a lot of the product like a 350 Ceramac is old repurpose, repurpose buildings that are inefficient uh, and not really meant to be data centers. They just happen to sit, you know, near fiber, near power. Uh, and somebody took a chance at doing something like that. Um, you know, there's as of late, there's been a brand new development, Corsa 8 CH2. Uh, it's the first greenfield development uh, just southwest of, of right downtown, uh, which is really, you know, the first of its kind. Uh, you know, QTS repurposed the, the printing press is kind of more large, what we would consider more of a suburban campus uh, close to downtown. Um, you know, but from a, you know, a core site standpoint, they're really focused on connectivity. A lot of the users who go downtown are focused on proximity, uh, being at the edge, uh, being peer, peering points of, you know, be it financial institutions, their, their convenience, their office space, uh, access to the personnel within the local market for, you know, things like Netflix and shopping and, and you name it, where uh, they're going for performance rather than, you know, I need to stand up two megawatts for, you know, a disaster recovery. It's just, it, does, it makes more sense to put something like that in the suburbs. 
Um, cloud on ramps and cloud accessibility uh, has been also been something that's driven downtown demand. Uh, a lot of the on ramps that are being developed are, uh, you know, at some of the, the local facilities, QTS and, and CoreSite. So um, rather than going into 350 Cermac and paying a premium, they're able to go into other locations and still access some of those on ramps. So uh, very dynamic and it's very user driven specific to what each company is trying to accomplish. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, just the fact that I think as the data center user becomes more mature and they understand what their options are and, and the cost behind those options, you know, there's been some different developments that have been created to help solve some of those challenges. And, you know, one of the things that we certainly see data center users really trying to understand more and more is the importance of connectivity and how network and access to a, a mature, robust uh, network infrastructure is really driving a lot of decision making as it relates to hey, how far logistically, like distance wise, can I be from like one location to another? And um, and so it's a very interesting thing to watch, uh, you know, from our perspective, as we th as we think about how data center markets grow and uh, from a location standpoint, but also from like the philosophical side of, you know, why you would put a data center development here versus there. So it's a really interesting thing to see. And it's it's one of the things I think obviously that's highlighted by the Chicago market. Um, and it's been fun to watch that market grow the way it has because it really reveals a number of the trends that we've seen, you know, uh, in the last three, five, seven years. Let's talk about today. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an exciting time, I think, for Chicago for a number of reasons. Um, but one of them is some of the tax legislation that's been passed you know, in the last year to really help um, attract data center requirements. But just at a high level, g give an overview of like of what that looks like and how you think that's impacted the market so far. Yeah, it's it's been a, a long time coming. Um, we've there's been a number of bills over the past couple of years that have, have tried to move forward. And, and I think with the, the governor uh, Pritzker coming in and really trying to get some quick wins, uh, there were some infrastructure bills and larger bills that were passed that they kind of grouped us in as part of that. Um, I think it's it's great to finally be on the same level playing field as some of the other top markets like a Dallas or uh, Ashburn, Virginia. I think, you know, it, it, to a certain extent, it kind of puts us ahead of some of those markets because we also don't have personal property tax, whereas, you know, a Dallas does. And that's a, an additional couple points off uh, from a management standpoint. So, um, you know, I think it has the opportunity to really attract some, you know, larger deployments. Um, I, I know working with some of my customers, they love uh, looking at some of that, love saving costs on, on infrastructure. Um, you know, I think it's uh, going to be on a facility by facility basis. I think with everything going on with COVID, it's really locked down a lot of the state uh, approval making processes and things of that nature. Uh, the way it kind of trans transpires is that you apply uh, for the you know the the tax legislation, you essentially go go through and get a verbal approval, and then you go through and get a, a memorandum of understanding, and each of the major providers has to go through that process. And uh, some are having more difficulty on qualifying different addresses that are really one campus, and others are having a difficulty qualifying for carbon neutral uh, requirements and green credits that that need to be. Uh, you know, included as part of it. But, you know, everybody's kind of moving on with that process. Uh, you know, it's interesting to see, or it will be interesting to see how this uh, transpires with them actually achieving it and what demand that gets. Um, there's a few operators that do have it uh, in place. And we've had uh, a couple of transactions that have waited until that's gotten in place to move forward with their transaction. So it's, it's, uh, I think it's a huge improvement here for Chicago. Somebody, you know, Illinois is constantly getting, flack for having high taxes and this alleviates all of it from a data center standpoint. Yeah, the I always say the quickest way to change the landscape of a market is to, you know, change the tax incentives. You know, power cost takes a long time to to change, you know, building different data center developments takes time, building ecosystems of connectivity and network takes years and years and years. But man, yep. when, once that tax legislation changes, it immediately changes the opportunities for you know, typically larger customers that have the, uh, you know, buying power to qualify for some of the things that are that are out there. And, and so it will certainly be interesting to watch. And I agree with you, too. It's like I don't think most people think of Chicago or Illinois as, you know, a state where you can get some of those benefits. So the fact that that's in place now, uh, you know, we think will have a significant impact on what opportunities, 
you know, look there. You mentioned uh, COVID-19. You know, what, what impact have you seen that have so far on, you know, the Chicago data center market and just the data center market as a whole? So for those of you that don't know, Andy is working, um, you know, hand in hand with companies that have data center requirements and are trying to figure out uh, where to place their applications, not just from a market standpoint, but from a facility standpoint. So he has, you know, really tip of the spear guidance and conversations with companies that are working through these challenges. So, you know, what have you seen so far, Andy, with the people that you've been working with or just uh, what you think will, how COVID-19 will impact the market? Yeah, I think, you know, the initial uh, response to that would be just operationally, you know, no different than going to your office space is how do they continue to operate and, you know, secure a data center and keep people doing remote hands and all that sort of thing. And it sounds as though that they've, they've done a really good job of kind of getting back to a skeleton crew that still works for the clients in the facility, uh, spreading people out and, and keep, keeping people from, from getting, you know, uh, sick, uh, with the disease. And, um, you know, I think overall it's, it's, you know, kind of status quo with, uh, with everybody, uh, at least on the operational standpoint. Um, we have a couple projects where build outs are due in June and July. Uh, and a big concern was, of ours was, you know, one is operationally, are you going to be able to put the same staff on there to, achieve those strict timelines and then also, you know, getting things like busway from, from, uh, you know, across the seas and, you know, what's the delivery timeline on something like that. And so far, uh, we haven't seen any kind of major, uh, delays. Uh, if anything, it's, uh, you know, a couple days here or there that, that really kind of just allow for the spreading out of work and, and that sort of thing, but it's not anything that's, Hey, we can't get busway for six months. It's, you know, two week delay type of deal. So I think that's been very important. I think transactionally, um, we've seen some immediate requirements that have client, you know, clients that are already in place that need to exercise rofers or they need to expand immediately to accommodate traffic, um, you know, that they're seeing come across their websites or things that are driven by, you know, the work from home uh, side of things or the gaming side of things. Um, we've just seen a shift in application uh, need because of you know our change in lifestyle and um, you know bandwidth requirements and everybody kind of adjusting to that surge and you know, need, I think, has really driven some of these, at least connectivity hub data center requirements. So, you, th- you know, telex type of deals, Equinex type of deals. I need two cabinets here at this location in, you know, two weeks type of thing. You know, so um, that's been fun to see. Um, from a standard wholesale side of things, um, you know, I think it, we may see uh, just bigger enterprises moving quicker to the cloud or taking a jump uh, towards a strategy that they've maybe been putting off uh, for a period of time. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of plays out, but, um, you know, it's overall, it seems to be, you know, status quo and people are moving on as they need to. Yeah, we, you know, I think this, one of the big takeaways for us has just been watching the digital transformation take place for companies so much faster than, you know, they had originally planned, you know, in a strategic meeting or strategic plan yeah. to grow over one, three, five years and really work that plan over out or over a period of time. And certainly that has changed over the past, you know, month to three months, just based on uh, the, the challenges that, you know, have been put in front of everyone. Well, I think you mentioned the, the capital constraints of 2008. Uh, you know, I think we're seeing the same things as, you know, certain companies, retailers, um, you know, that, that just are, don't have an income right now or it's been drastically cut. Um, I think there's uh, there's some OPEX considerations as well, where, you know, we've seen certain companies ask for rent deferment, which you would never expect on data centers, uh, given the importance. Uh, but from a capital standpoint, I think you're going to see more of a move towards the OPEX structure, uh, whether it be colo or, or cloud to, uh, you know, get things up and running rather than continuing to own and operate. Uh, there's just going to be more scrutiny on, you know, saving operational costs and streamlining the business because they need to. Yeah. So when you think about Chicago for the rest of the year, the Chicago data center market, what are the, you know, what do you think will have the biggest impacts? You know, when we get to the end of 2020 and we look back, you know, what do you think will be uh, the key tells on how the Chicago market, you know, did over that period of time? There's a lot. I mean, you mentioned, I mean, there's a lot of exciting things taking place. You know, you mentioned core sites growth downtown. There's uh, several developments in, you know, kind of the suburbs of Chicago that are growing. There's like a very competitive uh, wholesale co-location market in the greater Chicago area. Uh, so just given those thoughts, what are some things you think will 
will be uh, will tell the story of Chicago in 2020. Yeah, I think um, you know you're starting to see a lot of uh, second phases or additional phases of projects. Um, you know, people building out, uh, people that bought new sites like Stream and and Stack and Raging Wire and uh, Cyrus One and Digitality Trust. They're all kind of building this you know two, three, and four megawatts that are all scheduled to be delivered uh, Q3, Q4 of this year. So we're expecting you know probably 30 megawatts of of you know, capacity, commissioned white space capacity coming to the market uh, towards the second half of this year. So it'll be interesting to see what that does to rates uh, that are already compressed. Uh, you know, typically we were up in the 140s and 150s per KW, and that's dropped, you know, 30% in, in the matter of six months. Um, you have other groups like uh, Digital Crossroads right over the border trying to serve Chicago market, um, you know, right off uh, Lake Michigan. It's literally sits on the border, um, you know, that are touting some of the same tax incentives. So you know, defining what Chicago market is, I think is yet to be seen. I think uh, from an enterprise standpoint, you know, we're still going to see the, the same 100 to 500 KW deals and the same velocity that we always have, if not increased. And, and we're seeing that um, from a renewal standpoint, I see a lot of emphasis put on that and, and what a long term renewal looks like uh, for a client that is, you know, moving 30 to 40 percent of their infrastructure to the cloud. Um, you know, somebody who did 1.2 megawatts with digital, you know, eight years ago, what does that renewal look like for them? Um, so I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing some of these leases come to uh, come to renewal time and, and what those look like. Um, I, I think the biggest impact overall is what these cloud companies do, um, you know, whether they continue to, to kind of plop down big uh, deployments or if it's more strategic. Uh, there's a couple of requirements out there that are very geographically uh, sensitive and need to be within certain latency ranges of other locations and um, need to be in very specific areas. Um, you know, it'll yet to be seen whether they uh, build themselves or take co-location space. Uh, Microsoft has been very uh, vocal about how they want to move towards, you know, build their own infrastructure moving forward. But, you know, they, they seem to take a long time to do that. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, viable co-location space that's available. So, whether they some of that ends up in colo or some ends up in you know a built uh, property somewhere, I think uh, is yet to be seen. But it'll be interesting. I think you know ten megawatts here or there can really fluctuate the market demand. Yeah, absolutely. You know, especially in areas like Chicago or Dallas or you know some of the markets that uh, you know have seen some like cloud demand in certain periods of time, but it's not you know as consistent. Uh, I certainly think that'll be a big, um, you know, thing to watch in uh, not just Chicago and Dallas, but across the the U.S. You know, we just as as you know, we we um, released quarterly updates on the data center market, and you know, the first quarter was really strong across the country. Um, you know, and and there's certain areas that are stronger than others, but um, you know, we believe over time that probably some of the things that companies are working through will actually impact the space in a positive way. And, um, you know, it'll certainly be interesting to watch. So let's push that aside for a second. You mentioned that you said kind of new way of like life, you know, we're all working from home, we're doing different things with our families. What are some, you've got two little ones at home. Uh, what are some fun things you've been able to do with your kids that have been maybe, uh, you know, something that you haven't been able to do in the past or like, what's been your favorite thing to do? Yeah, I th you know, it's, I guess it's probably not anything that we haven't done in the past, but I think it's more time of it. Um, you know, I think like everybody, everybody's just going out on walks and I've talked to more neighbors than I've talked to since I moved in uh, to this house and everybody's very, you know, social all of a sudden. Um, but, you know, from a, a kid standpoint, it's just, uh, you know, having the time and energy uh, to sit down and read books and, you know, work on school stuff and uh, do all that. Uh, we've gone on hikes and, you know, looking around our, our local area and, and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, a lot of driveway talks with, you know, the parents and the neighbors and, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, I don't mind it. Um, you know, some my, my wife is going nuts, but, uh, you know, every, everybody's doing all right. That's good. Well, I think we probably all had the highs and lows of, you know, working from yeah. home. And obviously it brings certain challenges. And, and uh, but, you know, thanks for sharing that. And you point out, I mean, it's, you know, we're obviously at work and everybody's working hard, but, you know, the, the things that count and matter, the things that you mentioned, which, you know, spending time with family and kids and getting to know neighbors and all those things are, are great things to do. So, Andy, as always, thank you so much for 
uh, stopping by and, and jumping on to do this video and, and talking Absolutely. about the Chicago market and um, you know certainly excited to see how it grows in the future. You know, for those watching, if you want to talk more with Andy about Chicago, uh, we will make sure his email is in uh, our show notes so that you can reach out to him directly. But but he's you know an expert in the Chicago market as well as other markets across. Uh, the U.S. So feel free to reach out to him. But Andy, we wish you and your family nothing but the best. And we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Yeah, likewise. You as well.